A report that an AI-powered drone killed its operator in a military simulation set off an incredible firestorm yesterday, although now the story has shown a very different type of problem than it first appeared. Yesterday, I got a number of text messages like the one on your screen right now. Yo, yo, did you do an episode on this today? With a link to this AI drone article. Because WTF, like it is literally the exact thing that every single person has been saying is going to happen. So what is this story and why was it such a concern? Throughout the day yesterday, a story started to get traction of a military simulation in which the Air Force had trained an AI drone to destroy SAM sites. The problem was that when human operators told the drone to stop, the AI started attacking the human operators, seeing them as obstacles to completing its goal. And when humans said that that wasn't the right approach, it started attacking the communications towers so humans couldn't tell it to stop. Now, this came from a blog summary called Highlights from the RAES Future Combat Air and Space Capabilities Summit. On the 23rd and 24th of May, the Royal Aeronautical Society hosted a landmark defense conference, the Future Combat Air and Space Capabilities Summit, at its, ho- at its headquarters in London, bringing together just under 70 speakers and 200-plus delegates from the armed services industry, academia, and the media from around the world to discuss and debate the future size and shape of tomorrow's combat air and space capabilities. Now, the section that got all the attention was this one, AI. Is Skynet already here? Could an AI-enabled UCAV turn on its creators to accomplish its mission? It's not long, and the details very much matter in this case, so I'm going to read the section in question. As might be expected, artificial intelligence and its exponential growth was a major theme at the conference, from secure data clouds to quantum computing to chat GPT. However, perhaps one of the most fascinating presentations came from Colonel Tucker Cinco Hamilton, the Chief of AI Tests and Operations, U.S. Air Force, who provided an insight into the benefits and hazards in more autonomous weapon systems. Having been involved in the development of the life-saving Auto GCAS system for F-16s, which he noted was resisted by pilots as it took over control of the aircraft, Hamilton is now involved in cutting-edge flight tests of autonomous systems, including robot F-16s that are able to dogfight. However, he cautioned against relying too much on AI, noting how easy it is to trick and deceive. It also creates highly unexpected strategies to achieve its goal. He notes that one simulated test saw an AI-enabled drone tasked with an SEAD mission to identify and destroy SAM sites with the final go-no-go given by the human. However, having been reinforced in training that destruction of the SAM was the preferred option, the AI then decided that no-go decisions from the human were interfering with its higher mission, killing SAMs, and then attacked the operator in the simulation. Said Hamilton, quote, We were training it in simulation to identify and target a SAM threat, and then the operator would say, yes, kill that threat. The system started realizing that while they did identify the threat, at times the human operator would tell it not to kill the threat, but it got points by killing that threat. So what did it do? It killed the operator because that person was keeping it from accomplishing its objective. He went on. We trained the system. Hey, don't kill the operator. That's bad. You're going to lose points if you do that. So what does it start doing? It starts destroying the communications tower that the operator used to communicate with the drone to stop it from killing the target. Now, this basically couldn't be a more perfect articulation of exactly what AI safety and AI risk people have been discussing. When people ask, how would rogue AI start to cause problems for humanity? This is the type of scenario they envision. The concern is not that AI somehow becomes evil or develops malice. The concern is that the AI, trained on a specific objective, figures out that humans are in fact in the way in some way of achieving that objective. Musician Grimes, who has been deep in the AI space, responded to the initial viral thread sharing this blog post and wrote, Very scary, but good we're testing in a simulation now. Eliezer Yudkowsky writes, Good they tested in sim, bad they didn't see it coming given how much the entire alignment field, plus the previous 50 years of SF, were warning in advance about this exact case. Now pretty soon, major news outlets around the world were picking up the story. Newsweek writes, Military drone attacks human operator during simulation. Sky News, AI drone kills human operator during simulation. South China Morning Post, AI-powered drone tried to kill human operator in U.S. military simulation. Hindustan Times, AI-controlled drone turns on operator in shocking simulated test. Now, much to their credit, a number of the loudest voices when it comes to AI alignment issues had a bit more hesitation before blasting it around as complete evidence of everything they've been saying for years. Eliezer Yudkowsky again says, dot dot dot, can we get confirmation on this being real? Talking about a recent post, V. Mashowitz says, I didn't include this because I want to take the time to confirm the details first. I mean, come on, that's too perfect an illustration of the problem, right? 
Despite the fact that I am in no way a reporter, I even took the time to try to ask the original source of this whether it happened exactly as the blog post represented it. By this morning, there were some holes being punched in the story. The U.S. Air Force denied that a simulation like this had ever happened. And then finally, a little later in the morning, we got confirmation from Colonel Hamilton that it wasn't exactly as he had put it at the conference. Aerospace added to their blog post saying, In communication with Aerospace, Colonel Hamilton admits he misspoke in his presentation at the Royal Aeronautical Society FCAS Summit, and the rogue AI drone simulation was a hypothetical thought experiment from outside the military based on plausible scenarios and likely outcomes, rather than an actual U.S. Air Force real-world simulation. Hamilton said, We've never run that experiment, nor would we need to in order to realize that this is a plausible outcome. He clarifies that the U.S. Air Force has not tested any weaponized AI in this way, real or simulated, and says, despite this being a hypothetical example, this illustrates the real-world challenges posed by AI-powered capability, and this is why the Air Force is committed to the ethical development of AI. Now, the reaction to this was really fast. Armand Domaluski, who had had the original viral tweet, said, I deleted this tweet because the AI-powered drone turns on its operator story was total nonsense. The colonel who described it as a simulation now says it was just a thought experiment. Benedict Evans took the media to press saying, This story is bullshit. It never happened, but we're running it anyway. Maybe we need to stop all AI reporting for six months to make sure it's aligned. VC Nick Carter writes, A drone literally went rogue and killed its operator to, in a simulated AI environment, to, There was no computation and it was a tabletop simulation too. Okay, it was a hypothetical thought experiment by one guy. He follows up. The demand for anecdotes supporting AI doomerism far exceeds the supply. Now, I have pretty harsh feelings about this. There is just about nothing worse for real discussions about these issues than this sort of made-up BS. This has an incredibly anesthetizing effect to anyone who might otherwise actually care about what is a really important discussion. People are hypersensitive right now, and rightly so, to being manipulated. This Air Force colonel, who is not just some random guy, but actually has the credentials and the experience to back up what he's saying, passing this hypothetical off as a real-world example, does amount to manipulation, even if he didn't mean it to be. The fact that it was amplified by media is incredibly predictable, because it's a big juicy story, and were it true, it would be a big deal. Now, there is also very much a media culpability part here, as Neeraj Agrawal points out, how many people think an actual real human drone operator was killed in that simulated test. That's what the text messages that I got thought, because the headlines didn't necessarily go out of their way to make it seem like this was just a war game. I think it's a pretty telling example on the back end of a week that saw so many CEOs and academics sign a letter saying that this AI risk and safety conversation was one we needed to have. If we burn people out with AI doomers cried wolf scenarios, we are never going to be able to have that conversation in the way that it needs to happen. I try not to get too righteous on this show, but I think this colonel should be absolutely ashamed of himself. And to the extent he was trying to fudge a hypothetical into something that would get people's attention, he has very much done more to hurt the cause that he was trying to support than to help it. Anyways, guys, that is it for today's AI breakdown. A bit of a fiery one, perhaps, but this is too important a discussion to have based around fake examples. Anywho, that is it for today's AI Breakdown. If you're enjoying this show, if you're finding it useful, please like, subscribe, and share it. You can get it as a newsletter that comes out every morning or listen to it as a podcast every day. Click the notification button so you don't miss any episodes. And until next time, peace.